Hey everybody, this is Dan. Um, I'm going to be doing some paint overs for Art Camp uh, as usual. So I've got a couple in here that I might work on. Uh, I've, I was looking at these three. I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to get to all of them tonight. Um, first thing I'm going to do is start with an environment. I don't do those often, so bear with me here. It's been a while, but uh, I am going to talk about the few things I know about environment art and uh, hopefully take this piece somewhere. One second. Okay. So this seems fairly, uh, fairly obvious in terms of subject matter, so I'm going to just go from there. Basically, you know, you've got this island, which I'm going to assume is a floating island because of all the clouds and everything, and then you've got this ship. So right off the bat, um, the wide shot is fine. Uh, I'm okay with that. Make it a banner or something. But the placement of stuff, again, you know, we want to balance this composition, make it look good. So the placement of stuff is going to change. I'm going to uh, move the ship onto a third. Uh, one weird thing about this ship that I want you to notice before I move it, let me uh, let's see here. One weird thing about this ship, I'm going to draw this in with this dark line here. Um, the edge of the island and the ship are just touching each other on that corner. Like it's uh, it's like the definition of a tangent. Um, now I'm assuming this is where I might be wrong, but I'm going to interpret this because it doesn't say in the uh, in the forum. I'm going to assume that this ship is supposed to be flying towards us this way, coming at us this way. So I'll thicken the arrow in the direction I think it's going to make some forced perspective here. I feel like the ship's coming this way, up and at us. It's, you know, come from back here and it's swooping around towards us like that. That's what it feels like. But it's cornered with this island here like that. And what that does when two things touch like that and they don't overlap each other and there's no spatial distortion, it makes it feel like this is supposed to be a part of this island and then it's like docked there. But I don't see a dock and I don't see a bridge and I don't see anything connecting the two. So I have to assume that this ship is supposed to be in front. And that's how I'm going to start the critique. First thing I'm going to do is make the ship bigger. I'm going to bring it over more. I want to say this is about where the third lies. Again, I'm going to grab my crop tool just to see. And yeah, there we go. There's the third right there. It's intersecting on both of those, so it's sitting good. Um, oops. I'm going to erase out some stuff just so I get a cleaner selection of this, uh, this ship. And uh, I'm going to grab, actually I'm going to grab a uh, paintbrush tool. And uh, that'll help me wash over this a bit easier. So, yeah. So yeah, I'm just going to try and use some basic compositional stuff first to make the piece sit a little bit better in terms of the stuff you've introduced and then after that I'm gonna look at the actual design of some of the stuff in this and uh, hopefully hopefully push a little bit of that as well so bring some clouds in the front here clouds back here sinking into this kind of warm color um, I feel like this is supposed to be a floating island. I'm not entirely sure why it's reading that way. It just feels that way to me. So, close this. I'm going to crit this based on that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do... Let's see. 
I might actually make this significantly different. I'm going to play here for a minute and see if I find something I like. But the first thing that strikes me about the design of the ship is that this balloon is nowhere near big enough to be full of gas to lift this thing. Just from a design standpoint, it looks like this is supposed to be a ship because of this deep you know, thing here and these things on the side and the sails. And I get that, but as unrealistic as you know, fantasy Zeppelins tend to be, you still want something that looks like it can at least carry the weight that the object is supposed to be. So I'm going to play with the design of this based on that and actually have it cropping off the canvas for now. Let's see what happens as I keep going here. So this is going to be the bottom and it's going to come up here. This is going to end up being way darker. Yeah, I'm also going to add some ribbing to it because if you know anything about Zeppelin design or blunt design, that's a very important thing to have so it doesn't burst and it's flexible and it's uh, supported. It's kind of like the way that a whale's mouth works, which is why it can expand so huge and suck up krill. It's the same basic design principle, you, something that's going to be flexible. And again, I might bring this down into the piece. I'm still playing. Still playing. We'll find something that's going to work, though. I just know that the blimp looked very small. Grab this color here. In terms of the rigging, it looks like you've got some kind of bow here, so I'll bring this forward a bit more and bring a line down, something. It looks like you've got sails here, these are supposed to be sails on the side. Um, they're kind of coming forward at a weird angle. I'm going to push them out a bit like they're catching more wind and really fluff them out and also drop them down uh, significantly. So they're going to wrap like this now. Just because they feel a little tall. So these also feel like they have, you know, some obvious ropes connected to them. And bring those back into the center as well. Um, all these straight lines here, that's not what they'd do. They'd be at diagonals. So let me get rid of those. Also going to, let's see here. Let's see. Copy this. Bring it down to like here, maybe. I just want to try something out. Again, I'm just playing with balancing the composition and making the elements and it make a little more sense right now, so bear with me. Show a little bit more of the ship receding. Bring this up a bit because it's not in water. That's there for flip support but it's not in water and the balloon means it's not going to flip because it's going to be pulled up. So 
from a design standpoint, the dip doesn't necessarily have to be that deep. Um, let's see. So you get these things coming off on the sides. I'm going to do some supports from the bottom because if beams are sticking out like that and they're unsupported and the wind picks up, they're just going to snap off. They're just kind of unsupported and flimsy, so I'm going to do some some supports with some Zeppelin-y looking ties and things here. Uh, bring this out. This one's still coming out too far. That's okay. I'm pulling in. Bring this balloon down. this coming up I'm trying to keep the elements of your original design that work and tweak the ones that maybe don't because a cool you know a, a good airship design because it's a vehicle even if you make it go crazy and you make it look really really cool and weird like the Final Fantasy airships or something like that you still want it to be functional you want someone to look at it and think it could fly. That's really the only challenge. You can make up as much stuff as you want. It just has to feel like it's going to fly. Otherwise, it's going to look very, very wonky, just, you know, flying around and not really having a purpose. It's got to look somewhat aerodynamic, and it's got to look somewhat believable that it's going to float. So, I'm working on, I just worked on the aerodynamics by putting those struts on the sides. And the balloon is what's going to help with the, uh, the floating. Put a metal tie here, some copper thing maybe. Uh, let's see. I'm also going to put some supports coming out of the side of the balloon for people that need to climb it and get to the top if there's a problem because those would need to be there you also want those up there so the balloon can't get blown from side to side and rotate the thing you know you want some supports that are movable up there so this thing can uh, stay balanced so I'm going to do that I'm gonna Add some supports to these so they're coming out of the thing better. Okay. I might even add propellers to these. I'll come back to that later. I feel like they need something, something airshipy. You don't want to make it just look like a boat that has a balloon on top, because that's what everybody does, and it's just going to look very, very plain and weird, and it's not going to look like it can actually fly, and you don't want to do that. You want to give it some kind of character. Oh, let's see here. I'm going to bring the point of the bow up a bit, so it's more ship-like. So, there we go. Get that, that swoop that curls up there like that. So cool. You had another cool thing with the uh, seagulls back here. I'm gonna grab these seagulls and move them for now. They might not end up staying in the piece, but We'll see. We might find a place for them. For now, I'm going to stick them over here. Up here, I guess they'd fit better.
this holder for now. Let me get up here again. So hopefully, uh, hopefully people have been using the paint overs and they've been helpful. Um, I've had a few messages from some people that have used them and they've said thanks. Other people I haven't heard from at all. Um, if you have used a paint over I've done for you and it's been any help or if there was something you wanted me to cover that I maybe didn't cover, um, please post it on the forum or send me a message on the forum and let me know. Uh, I want to make sure you guys are getting, you know, information you can actually use out of these so any uh, any feedback is greatly greatly appreciated so if you're listening to this and I've done something or you have a piece that you'd really like me to do that I haven't gotten to uh, anything at all just um, post it in the forum and I will definitely see it check the forum three times a day uh, once when I get up once with lunch and once before bed so I will definitely see it with uh, within a relatively quick amount of time from when you posted it. So I love hearing back about paint overs. I always want to get better at doing them. I always want to know if they help people. So let me know for sure. I'll be happy to uh, talk with you about anything and everything. I'm going to add some other fins down here. Just something. Just something to balance it out. And uh, there's a bottom piece, maybe. Mm, not a bottom piece, not yet. So the next thing we have to do is figure out the island, which I think is supposed to be floating. I mentioned that earlier. I'm not entirely sure if it is because the person who painted this probably isn't in the chat. If you are, uh, please speak up. I'd love to, uh, to know for sure if it is or if it isn't. But let's see. I might leave it where it is and I might move it up. I'm trying to figure out what's going to work best compositionally. Um, look at the original. Yeah, that's the thing. I can't figure out if this is supposed to be an underside edge or if this is just being blocked by clouds. It reads as an underside edge, so I guess maybe they are floating. So let's try and work with that. Let's select this out. down down and again if anyone has any questions uh, as usual stuff they want me to talk about concerns whatever just put it in the chat if you're watching and I will be more than happy to talk about it I uh, I know there's not usually that many people in here watching these lately because I don't really announce them I just do them when I can when my daily work is over so apologies for that apologies if people are missing them and they want to see them I know it's annoying I do these when I can, when all my other stuff I gotta do for the day is over, and it's not always at the best time for everyone, so I'm sorry. edge. 
still confused about that edge. So the thing to keep in mind with the blue, if there's clouds there, you're not going to see this guy. Um, so this blue I'm probably going to get rid of mostly. There might be some reflected blue in certain spots, but the blue blue you're probably going to want to keep for, you know, up here where the clouds are parting and you're actually getting a, a shot of the sky. Birds. Bring this down compositionally. Down here. This is leaning towards. I guess it's okay that it's leaning towards purple because this has already got some kind of sunset colors. That's fine. It's obviously, you know, either sunrise or sunset. I'm going to go with sunset. But, yeah, that's, that's fine if it leans a little purple. I just wanted to double check because, as some of you will remember from previous streams, I am dichromatically colorblind, so purple can be a problem color for me. i got to always check it. Hey Sam Peterson, hi Marjorie. Good to have you. I'm still playing with this, trying to figure out where I'm going to take it. <clears throat> Show some clouds. Thinking maybe this might work. Some blue on the bottom. Some clouds around it. We'll see. Thinking about showing an underside to this island. And again, based on how it was painted, I'm assuming it's a floating continent. I don't know. If this is wrong, stick with the compositional paint over. Learn from that. If it's right, then good. You painted it in a way where I interpreted it correctly. So congratulations. So we got some clouds over here, that's fine, I kind of like that actually, can obscure the, uh, the other side of the island a bit, that's good. So clouds are one of those things you can kind of do anything with. Whatever composition you want to reinforce, you can kind of make the clouds reinforce it. They're one of those just like get out of jail free tricks. You can really make clouds do anything. Clouds, uh, running water, you know, foliage, the way plants grow, tree branches, 
all that stuff is like if you want the viewer to look a certain place all you have to do is use the clouds to do that it's basically just lines that you're allowed to organize in any way you want to reinforce whatever composition you're trying to, to push it's always good when you get like a book cover job or something like that and they say that there's going to be tree branches in the piece and you can do whatever because then it's like okay no matter what the viewer is going to know exactly where to look because you get to use tree branches you can physically show them where to look by using the lines of the branches I'm gonna make some clouds wrapping around this mountain here like it's like these clouds are sort of blowing past it and they're just kind of being pulled away maybe some like you know hints that it keeps going over here some some rock faces or something that are very obscured hmm. yeah trees are the shit they're literally my favorite thing to get in a brief if a client tells me that it's going to have trees, I'm happy to work on it. So again, this paint over might lean on the rougher side because um, the file that it started from was very, very early, pretty much just a sketch. So I'm going to keep going with it, but uh, yeah. Just keep in mind this might be on the rougher side because I don't want to finish too much. I just want to show you how to take it somewhere that is going to get you closer to finish. I say that now. And then later in the video I'm going to be zoomed in painting a figurehead on that boat. Mark my words. So stay tuned for that. So here's the underside of the island over here. This is a layer of clouds and you can see the sky underneath it. I like that effect. I like that it makes it seem like it's a ring of clouds that this island is kind of in. Maybe the island is what broke the clouds up when they hit it and that's what made the ring. Either way, it's just for some reason visually satisfying to have a little bit of that blue down there. Again, I'm going to light the clouds up behind the boat because it launches the contrast of the boat, the boat, the airship forward. Uh, yeah. So the island. Continue. The airship's going to be cropping over it a little bit. It's going to lighten up the values around the edge where it's going over it. Number one, because it's going back into the clouds. Number two, because you want to launch that airship forward in the value, so. Light that up. Gonna push some of these values back a little bit. Drop some down as well. Okay. Dan, do you have any clients you'd recommend besides Pezo for people who aren't quite at Wizards level? Um, I mean, there's a lot. There's some clients that you could get that I 
don't recommend. I don't know. I worked with Moonga for a while. They're a card company that does lower tier card art, but they actually pay pretty well for, for incoming illustrators. Uh, that's M-O-O-N-G-A. They're a really good company. They always pay on time. Uh, they had fun stuff. Um, a lot of people work for Fantasy Flight, which I've been known to shit on on here before. They're not the worst company in the world, but they don't pay much for a lot of work. Like, they'll ask you to do a lot, a lot of stuff on really, really big name things like uh, Game of Thrones, card game, or something like that. And they'll only pay 100 per card, which is like, for the money they're obviously making off these licensed things, it's not really fair. So I try not to recommend them, but they definitely hire people. And it's work you can put in your portfolio that's, you know, of a licensed thing like Game of Thrones. So if you don't care about the $100 paycheck and you're just looking for some work to start out, Fantasy Flight might be a place that you might want to look at. Um... I'm trying to think of uh, the name of this place. They make a uh, oh god, why can't I think of it? I can't think of it. It's uh, they make a tabletop game that's got like big robots and steampunky stuff and uh, god, it's I think it begins with an R. For some reason, it's uh, it's not clicking in my head. Hopefully, I'll think about it. Yeah, War Machine. There you go, War Machine. You could uh, you could look at them. I know a lot of people do that coming in. Uh, there you go. I can't remember the name of the game. I think it is War Machine though. Uh, let's see. A lot of the jobs that I do and that other people I know do are various. Um, more people are getting work from Kickstarter now than they seem to be from traditional company avenues. There's so many independent projects getting funded and stuff like that that need artists that, you know, independent new people are actually very good for because they, they can kind of stylistically do their own thing. Um, so many of those are popping up that a lot of people, a lot of people, myself included, are getting the bulk of their income from these independent projects. Um, so yeah, definitely check out Kickstarters, stuff like that. Look for things that you'd actually want to work on. You know, if, if you don't know if they're hiring or not, just reach out, send an email, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And then just, you know, basic private commissions. CA has kind of fallen off for commissions. CG Hub's no longer around, obviously. But you can still get some good stuff on DeviantArt. Um, a lot of people shit on DeviantArt. There's no reason to shit on DeviantArt. You can get some quality jobs on there. Uh, you can also get some terrible jobs on there, but <laughs> that's the same with uh, with every website. So there's no no reason to pick on DeviantArt above anything else. It's a, it's a fine site for getting work. Very good site for getting exposure to a huge audience there. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff to do besides besides Pezo. All kinds of stuff. by posting in their job area or being on DA in general. Uh, DA has two things. You can post and say that you're looking for work. You can go into postings where people say they're looking for an artist, and you can just be on DA and hope somebody sees your stuff and commissions you. All three of them work. I've done all three. I've gone on the forum and actually looked for jobs and found some. I've had people looking for jobs publicly that you know I've seen and clicked on. So uh, at the same time, I've had other people Basically, uh, I put my stuff up and said, you know, I'm looking for work, and then people see me. I've gotten jobs that way. Uh, I've also just been in the community and got a message from random members on there that say, like, oh, I like your stuff. I really want a tattoo that looks like this thing you did. I'll pay you X hundred amount of dollars for it, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, those jobs are great, too. And uh, some of them lead to cooler stuff. So definitely be part of the community. Don't just put your art there. Um, check out what's going on. You might find a fun job. You never know. It's it's worth it's worth trying. <clears throat> but yeah, those are the main three ways you can uh, get your work, get get income from from DA. Hope that makes sense.
going to grab a multiply layer here, grab some blue, and really push this balloon a bit on the shadow side. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I get jobs from doing live streams too. It's one of those things where like this sounds like a cop out, but it's actually solid advice. So please take it to heart if you're listening and you don't know how to find jobs. Um, the bigger part of the internet community you are, no matter where it is, the more likely jobs are going to find you, and you're going to find jobs. So live stream can potentially get you jobs. DeviantArt can potentially get you jobs. You know, CA can potentially get you jobs. Having a Tumblr with your contact information can potentially get you jobs, doing challenges, doing podcasts, you know, all that shit. The, the more of a presence you have on the internet, the more people know about you because you have a bigger presence. That automatically, by default, increases the chances that somebody listening who needs an artist is going to hear it. The more places you are, the more often, the more likely someone's going to hear it who can actually help your career. It's just kind of like a weird common sense thing that you don't think about in that way. But the more places you are on the internet, the more often, the better chances someone who can actually do something for you is going to see it. So do everything. Be everywhere. Be as proactive as you possibly can. Only good things can come from it. Even if you don't get jobs, you know, you'll get more industry contacts. You'll find a better community that suits the stuff you want to do. Like... It's just a good idea. It's just a really good idea. So try that. I've heard so many people complain that no one's hiring them, and it's like, you don't have a website, you don't have, uh, uh, you know, like a Facebook art page, you don't have a live stream. You know, like if I type your name in Google, nothing for your artwork comes up. You don't have a deviant art. It's like, it's literally your fault. No one's hiring you. If that's the case, like. No one's fault but your own. It's like, I don't know, this isn't a perfect metaphor, but the internet's basically a big party, and everybody's trying to show off and do magic tricks at the same time. And the louder you are in that room going, hey, hey, here's my stuff, hey, hey. And the flashier the tricks are, and the more impressive the, the routine, the more likely everyone's going to notice you. You want to be seen everywhere. You want to have good stuff to show when the people see it. And you want to present it really well. If you can do those three things, you're fine. You know, it's like everything's going to work out if you can do those three things. Don't be the loud guy at the party if you've got no story to tell. And don't tell a story if you're bad at telling stories. Have good work. Present it professionally. And make sure everybody knows how to find you. Like, everybody. Get a Tumblr. Get a Facebook thing for your art. Get everything you possibly can. I'm going to do some reflected light over here from the, the bright blue sky. This is the opposite side of the sun, so it's going to be cool light. Uh, this isn't a perfect representation of how it would fall on these rivets, but again, I can't do the whole illustration. I'm just trying to give you a rough idea in a reasonable amount of time.
darken this so it comes forward more. Same with these. Same with this over here. Same with this. Back here. Normal layer. Reflected light on the prow. Come in here and kill some of this blue that's back here because it doesn't make sense anymore. So this looks like it curves down and then up here there's like a back part of the boat. That's cool. I just want to make it clear that that's what that's doing. And then pull some of these clouds in beneath the ropes to really show that there's a separation of the deck and the balloon back there. Make like a little captain's perch with some things on the sides where the wheel would be. This is the shadow side, so we'll use cooler colors in the clouds over here. For the shadows. Thin this out quite a bit, so it actually looks like a mast of some kind. I wonder. Having two sails feels kind of weird. I wonder if there should be a third one. That might look weird too, though. Yeah, I don't know. I can't really decide. Maybe if it was lower. Propellers.
Thanks for the question, by the way. Makes it less silent, less often. It's a good thing. And now the silence returns. How is my turtle? The turtle's doing good. I've got a tortoise named Ulysses. He's cute. He's sleeping right now. He sleeps a lot. Once the sun's down, he's he's gone. We should all be so lucky. But that's not how it goes. And as promised, I'm going to zoom in, start looking at the design of this ship, even though I should not be doing this. I will do it because I am obsessed. Obsessed with the zoom tool. Let's take a look. I'll put a some kind of figurehead. I'll do the standard. I'll imply that it's a lady coming out of the bow. So face, breasts, arms, just roughing it in. Hair, I try to keep this as loose as possible just because the more defined one thing is the more defined everything else has to be and then you're stuck in that domino effect forever so some reflective light over here nothing too crazy just enough to show that, that scaffolding comes in that far uh, over here a lot. So for the struts on these, it looks like it's two pieces of wood, which I think is kind of cool. So I'm going to stick with that. And then over here, I'll make it a little more apparent that, you know, it's two pieces of wood. I'll put some rivets in between. Same over here. Pull this in. there. Make this a very clearly defined edge over here. Apply 
glass boards. Overlay layer. I'm going to play with probably like this to kill some of the red down here. multiply. Alright, turn that down. I'm going to actually, let's say that was a color burn. That changes to a color layer and pull some of the sky blue and just drop the opacity down to like 20% and the edges where the balloon is turning farthest away I'm going to start washing out the red so it's not as intense towards the edge this will make it recede back a bit more just you know because it's turning away also in the shadow side where it's really intense I might knock it back a bit you know it's subtle but it, it makes a difference in terms of this this colored form turning in space some shadow side under this rivet over here 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 uh, same down here same in the sail just using some blue to knock back the stuff that's facing the shadow side gonna shut everything off real quick just to get an idea of what I've done okay keep going Scribble in some clouds here, real quick. So again, feel free to ask questions, or if you just want to talk about something, I'm down. As long as it's not the World Cup, because I don't know anything about the World Cup. Sorry. I know nothing about it.
Okay, that third clouds on that third. Okay. Alright, I'm getting real quiet now. I have to put some music on. I do have personal projects, but I'm not going to talk about them. Because I have learned the hard way that the more you talk about personal projects, the less you get done on them, because it kills the excitement. So, I've got two that I'm working on. Uh, the only one I'll talk about is Steve Lichman, which is my collaboration comic with Dave Raposa. Uh, yeah. So, Steve Lichman. The only one I'll talk about. Love me some Steve Lichman. Hey Dan, I just saw you did a pin over on my demon summoning painting. Sorry I couldn't be there for the live stream, but I just wanted to say oops. What just happened? Can you guys hear me? Or is live stream disconnecting? stream problems.